Because we haven't stopped, man. Like, we've just been coming in working. And, um, you know, the coach has come in and say, listen, you know, <clears throat> now there's always look back on it. it some that was, you know, great. Some that, you know, we talked about for a while. Some we would, you know, be able to talk about. But, you know, just a five-second moment of reflection um, before we move on to the rest of the season to what's really important is getting prepared for the playoffs. I mean, we still, we won 27 games in a row. I mean, that's pretty awesome. So, you know, really, you know, we, we really wasn't in here saying, like, man, we got to get that record. Um, not at all. So, you know, now that it's over, I'm glad it's over. All right. He's glad it's over. Now that it's over, do you agree or disagree with Wade? Um, we welcome in our NBA analyst who was at the game last night. Excellent job, by the way, Chris Broussard. Uh, do you agree with Wade Do you, with the fact that he's glad that it's over? I understand where he's coming from because for the Heat, it had become two different focuses. Obviously, the ultimate focus is getting ready for the playoffs and winning the championship. But all of a sudden, they had this separate focus, which was breaking this record. And as historical and as a great as that would have been, at the end of the day, it wouldn't have done anything for their race to the title. So I understand where he's coming from. They also were developing some bad habits, you know, getting down to Cleveland by 27, getting down to Charlotte by double figures at home. You saw them do that same thing against Chicago. They hadn't learned their lesson, but against a good team, you weren't able to overcome it. So it's a wake-up call, in a sense, to the Heat to look. Get back focused on the playoffs by alone, nothing else. And so I think it's good in that respect. I understand what Dwayne was saying, but I'm going to say I disagree because we, I think a lot of us wanted to see history made. You know, if they had won 34 straight games and gone on to win a championship, it would have been undeniable that they were one of the greatest teams of all time. Now, they won 27 straight. If they still win the championship, you can certainly argue, and, and I would say throw them in that argument as one of the top teams of all time. But if they had won 34, it would have been undeniable. You would have had to give them their props. And look, they could have won, the, broken the streak, and still have five regular season games and about a week and a half left to rest LeBron and Dwayne Wade and all these guys. So the, it wasn't a situation of either or, either break the streak or go for the playoffs and the championship. They could have done both. So ultimately, I think it's not a good thing that the streak was broken. Stephen A., you agree or disagree Chris? with Wade? Well, I agree with them from the standpoint that, you know, listen, they can get focused on other things. It's very, very difficult to accomplish what they had already accomplished, let alone go on additional seven games and ultimately breaking that record. I do believe to some degree they got a bit distracted from the goal at hand. They knew that it was on the horizon. But at the same time, in terms of what Chris was pointing to as it pertains to habits, I think that they were letting bad habits seep in. And I think that that could be to any team's detriment with championship aspirations. So I understand that now that the streak is over, you know, you get to focus on it. But more importantly, they still won 27 straight. And as a result of winning the 27 straight, now that they've lost this game, because they won the 27 straight, if they end up not winning the championship, then obviously they're going to be heavily scrutinized, even more so. Because even though they didn't break the record, you still won 27 straight. You still exhibited a level of dominance unseen in the modern day era. And in light of that reality, to not finish the job by winning the championship, not only would you have missed out on making history with the streak, but then you would have came up short of the ultimate goal as well. So to me, this is somewhat heightened the level of urgency as it pertains to winning the championship. And now they get an opportunity to focus on that more so than ever before, because nobody's going to want to hear any excuses come playoff time. So you agree with what Dwayne said? I agree with what he said. I truly do. I'm with Chris on this one. I don't agree with what Dwayne said. And I have the highest regard for the 27 in a row. But I still say, Stephen A. and Chris, that the streak was actually the greatest thing that could ever happen to a defending champ. Because, as, as Kerry knows, on this show, often before the streak started, I said that the theme of the year for the Heat had become, to bar the movie title, are we there yet? As in, would the playoffs just start already? And all of a sudden, they won 9 and 10 and 11 and 12, and it became a mission to win 34 games in a row. 
I thought it was great. I rooted for it. I'm sorry that it didn't get there. But I think that team had building nightly motivation. And I think more bad habits might have set in, seeped in, as Chris said, if they hadn't had the streak to play for. I thought it was perfectly positioned for them to finish it off 34 in a row and have, what, five games left to take foot off gas, to rest up for the first round of the playoffs. And now I'm not sure what they're playing for. Seed, I, I don't know. I think they're going to have a hard time getting back up for the rest of their regular season games. Well, th this is probably the first time Skip and I have ever agreed. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, you know, look, over the past two, in, two years plus that the Heat have been together in the Big Three era, they have been underachievers in the regular season. There's no question about it. We've all questioned their motivation. Do they get complacent? You know, even earlier this year, to lose to the Knicks by 20 two times you know they hadn't beaten chicago and some indiana good teams before the streak began so this did look like a different heat team this looked like a team that had finally gotten over that getting complacent and was focused night in and night out and i still think that's the case i mean one loss in 28 games you know that that's tremendous so i still think that's the case if they can carry that focus into the playoffs then I think they're going to run through the East and then win the championship. Well, see, that's where I disagree. I think that last night showed me something, Chris. I still don't think anybody's beating the Heat outside of San Antonio. Yeah, San Antonio's got a shot, and I still, I still would have picked them as the favorites to beat the Heat. But I will tell you this. I think when you look at the Chicago Bulls last night, the willingness and the ability to play physical basketball, that's the one impediment to the Heat's success, potentially anyway. You know, you have a situation where you had LeBron James, you had D-Wade and Katz going to the hole, and obviously Chicago made you feel their presence. But what they also did was they really, you know, they really dug out on the shooters. And so if you don't have a perimeter game, you know, to help you out, then if you're the Miami Heat, you've got to get on a fast break, but that, that you have to rebound in order for that to happen. They did not rebound the Chicago Bulls. The likelihood is that they won't. And then if you're going to go to the hole, you're going to have to finish, which LeBron James is clearly capable of doing. But if you're getting out on those shooters, that puts even more of an onus on the Miami Heat. I think they'll find a way to win no matter what. But I think when you look at what they've done, despite the absence of a Derrick Rose, a Joe Kim Noah, a Noah, a Bellinelli, a Rip Hamilton, when you see and fantasize about those guys coming back, not only would shooters come back, but you'd also have size and Noah. And at the same time, if you get Derrick Rose back, I don't think it's a cakewalk to the finals for the Miami Heat by any stretch of the imagination. I think that the Chicago Bulls showed you the lone ingredient that can make it very, very difficult for the Miami Heat in the Eastern Conference playoff picture. Do you see the Bulls now as the number one? Let's assume Rose doesn't come back, but, you know, Noah will, obviously. You still see the Bulls as the top competitor for the Heat in the East, but above the Knicks, no, I've above always, Indiana and all that? I, I, I've often said, I've often said the Pacers, but help me out here, Chris and Skip, because I'll modify my position in this fashion. Without Derrick Rose, I'd still give the Indiana Pacers a slight edge, but I was assuming that Granger would come back. Then you look at the New York Knicks. I can't believe I'm saying this, but obviously Melo and J.R. Smith and all of that's important. But the acquisition of Kenyon Martin, the way that he's playing in terms of his physical presence on the defensive side of the floor, if Tyson Chandler comes back, from his neck injury, and you're talking about having the ability to put Tyson Chandler and Kenyon Martin on the floor at the same time with Melo potentially playing some three, all of a sudden the Knicks become very, very interesting as well. So I look at the Knicks, the Pacers, and the Chicago Bulls as being the three teams, Chris and Skip, but obviously all three have health issues that are question marks, and that will determine who's going to be the tougher of the three. Skip, what do you think? I think Stephen A. Smith is starting to speak with his heart again on his Knicks. But, but I, I think you're making some good points. And yet, I think Jason Kidd has to play about five years younger if they're going to have the shot that you think they're, they might have with Kenyon. But Stephen A., you continue to overlook the Boston Celtics. Yeah, I, I still say that. they pose the biggest threat. 
And I'm still starting to think that Doc would like to get the heat in the first round as opposed to any other round. Nice. Get them while they're they're right. Maybe after the streak, they'll they'll lose a little rhythm, and maybe round one is the round to try to go for the knockout of the Miami Heat for the Boston Celtics. Really quickly, guys, uh, earlier today we asked you all what the blueprint was to beat the Heat if there was one, and if, in fact, the Bulls provided it. Well, you all simply said they were out-rebounded, and you all being Skip and Stephen A., as well as they got extremely physical. LeBron, last night, talked about what he said 